let's say that here I am, happy, driving along in my car, you know, just just cruising, maybe listening to some tunes, something like that. I'm cruising, you know, you got your little traffic light, and here I am, about to go through my nice green light, when all of a sudden, whoa, there goes some guy, like a bat out of hell, he is, he is flying, that's some, some reckless driving, like, look out guy, I, I'm laying on the horn, you know, like, dude, I'm trying to go through the light, what the, the hell, man, and so, looking both ways, I proceed across the intersection, and kind of, it's not, not only just annoying, it's potentially dangerous, right, to have reckless drivers on the road, um, who gave that guy his license? Um, so, let's imagine that then I read about in the paper that the police apprehended this reckless driver and gave him, you know, a $200 ticket or something for reckless driving. Maybe more than that. Maybe some points on his license, something like that. But, so the police protection in that case... Let me draw what I think of a police. I'll draw a police. Give him some sort of police hat here. Oh god, that's that could be oh maybe a bill can salvage this attempt. Oh that's not great. Okay, how about okay, that that is like probably below satisfactory, but we're gonna work with it. Okay, so police. So so Let's imagine, and it's not, so the police is a public good. Um, it's fun, it's public in the sense of the economic definition of a public good, which I'll get to in a minute, but it's also public that it's, uh, you know, it's enjoyed by everybody, and it's a public, public funded by the public officials, by the government. Um, so, what would it be like if I, if it were a private good? If I had to say, like, all right, thanks for, you know, catching that guy, you know, $20 for your, for your hard work, right? If I, if I forked over $20 to the cop, um, maybe in advance to like, for have him on patrol or something, um, that's fine, but then we get into this other thing where, this guy on the road also gets the police protection, and this guy on the road gets the police protection, um, but they may or may not have paid. So they're cashing in on my dollar, and they're happy about that. You can tell. Look at those those smiles, those smug bastards. And I'm happy because I got my crazy driver caught, but I'd be a lot happier if I had done it for free like these guys had. So we're coming to what is known as the free rider problem. Now, that's a funny coincidence that it's rider when we're talking about, like, cars, but um, free rider problem. It doesn't necessarily have to do with cars, but that's a funny coincidence. Um, so they're the free riders. They're the freeloaders. They're, they're cashing in on my buck. I want them to pay the same amount. I'm, I'm kind of a chump here, right? Um, but I don't have a way of forcing them to do that. Well, we have taxes, but that's ultimately the way that you deal with some of these public goods. Um, so for example, so I'm going to say that here. Police protection, or police, or maybe law enforcement, is a public good. Or it's an example of a public good. Um, and some other, there's some other examples of public goods. So what makes a public good? Well, one of them is this... Is this um, there's two qualities to a public good. One is that the good or service is non-rival. And the other quality is that the good or service is non-exclusionary. So, non-rival, meaning that my benefit 
from the police protection um, in no way interferes with other other people's benefit from the police protection uh, and this is this might seem like circular or like I'm stating the obvious but think about um, think about like the car itself right like if I'm gonna buy a car then that technically is a rival good I, I guess because this is non-rival but my enjoyment if I'm driving the car that means you can't be driving the car or if I eat the slice of pizza you can't eat the slice of pizza um, which again may sound kind of bordering on trivial or tautological but um, it comes into this definition of what we mean by public good non-rival my benefit from the good or service does not interfere with anyone else's enjoyment of the good or service so maybe just a couple examples so non-rival like the music I was listening to what if there was someone else in the car with me right my benefit from the music doesn't interfere with their inner enjoyment of the music um, so that's an example you see it's kind of a weird thing maybe it doesn't apply to a lot of material things like like pizza you know it's kind of hard to share pizza in that way that'd be that'd be some very interesting pizza and I'd like to hear about that but the second quality non-exclusionary this means that um, it's we can't exclude people from in from benefiting from the good or service um, so just to go further with that when I pay my twenty dollars for the uh, for the police protection I can't exclude these guys from getting police protection. I'm like, hey cop, take this guy off the road for me, but leave him on the road for that guy. Kind of hard to do, right? Kind of hard to do. Um, or like with the music example, um, I can't. In in my car, I'm like, I'm gonna listen to music, but you can't. Well, maybe if I gave them earplugs or something, and I made them pay for to take the earplugs out I don't know that's, that gets kind of weird but like, say like a concert or concert hall or something you know you have your musicians on stage or whatever but you have to you know go past the the velvet rope or whatever first you have your line of people waiting to get in and pay money to listen to the music uh, so you could exclude people that way but say you were playing music in the street or something that'd be non-exclusionary you can't but yeah so those are two things what we mean by public goods and the market is not good at provisioning for these like I was explaining like if I pay my twenty dollars I can't say hey police take, take this reckless driver off the road for me but not for them because then they they've they've paid zero dollars in which they're very happy about but I would also, while I'm happy to get my police protection, I would be a lot, a little bit happier to get my police protection for free. But then, what if I start thinking like these guys? I'm like, well, someone else will pay, probably. There's probably people who think like me, and they'll pay for me. So I want to be one of these free riders, right? I want to get the benefit without paying. So then no one pays, and then the good or service goes away, and then you end up with reckless drivers so so how do we address the free rider problem um, like like we were saying police protection uh, is funded by taxes right and taxes is not something that's optional um, so that's one way of enforcing that people pay um, some other examples of public goods uh, Police protection is one. National defense. Maybe public art could be one. Like I was saying with the music, like if you have a sculpture or something in the town square or downtown or something, kind of hard to fix. Like my enjoyment of it won't reduce your enjoyment of it. And we also can't prevent other people from seeing it. Um, so that that might be one public art. It's even in the name, right? Public, or just maybe just art. I don't know. So 
It is kind of weird. Um, sometimes they're not really material things like police protection. Art, actually, I guess the benefit from the public art would maybe be like your enjoyment of the art, which it's that's not a material good. That's like feeling. Um, so, so yeah, this is an example of a market failure, the free rider problem in public goods. So I'll write that. Market failure.